This video is going to show you how to use the Results Data Acquisition Service using Ethernet IP and a MicroLogix type PLC using explicit messaging. As you can see, I'm connected here to a CVX using our Vision Terminal. The Ethernet IP has already been enabled and set up, so all we need to do is set up what data that we want to output. So you can see I have a simple program here set up already with uh, a pattern tool and just a simple pitch tool. So I'll show you how to add the output data items. You just need to go to the output section of the program under Ethernet IP. And for the results data acquisition service, this is going to read out anything that's set up in the byte allocation area only. So this message command that I'm going to show you will read out anything that you set up to output through this byte allocation tab. You can see here I've already added a pa the pattern tool it's XY angle result and a match percentage already, but I'll show you how to add another item. So to add items, all you need to do is click select data and uh, pick the data items from the list basically. So you can output uh, any variables like the total count, okay count, program time, things like that. You can also output judge values. In fact, let's say we want to output the total status as one of our items. I'll add that to the list, so that's the next item. And then under measured value, these are all the tool results. So again, we've already added the pattern, XY, angle, and match percentage. But let's say we want to add the average pitch reading of the pitch tool here. So I'll pick the pitch tool. Just find the item that you want to output and just add it to the list. So you can add m multiple items here. Each one of these will be output as a 32-bit number on the, on the PLC side, as you'll see when we finish the command. So just add the items that you want. You can also move the items around so if we want total status to be first we can move that up to the top we can delete any items that we need to along the list here so that's all you need to do so click OK when you're done and then when you get out here it'll show you the list of items it'll, it'll be output from top to bottom order as you'll see on the command when I issue it if you're using any kind of execute conditions where tools will not execute you could as a default it'll output a zero for that tool if it does not execute if you want it to just skip that tool, you can click None. But we're going to leave it the default output zero. So click OK. And when you're ready, just go to Run Mode. And Run Mode is where it will output items. If you're in Setup Mode, it will not actually output any items. So that's the setup on the CVX side. So next, we'll show you how to set up the message on the PLC. OK, we have the PLC connected. This is a MicroLogix 1100 PLC that we're connected to. And you can see we have a basic message already started up here. So I'll click on the setup screen for the message to show you how this is set up. And again, we're going to show you the data acquisition service. This is service code 4D. If I pull up the manual here real quick, you can see it's 4D as the service ID. And basically how this is going to work is we're going to send it four bytes of information. This is how much we're going to send. And then the receive is going to depend on how much data that we're collecting. So I'll get to that in a minute. But uh, as far as the send information, in bytes 0 and 1, that's you're going to tell it how many bytes to acquire. Uh, and again, I'll show you that in a minute here when we set up the message. But basically, it's four bytes for every data output item that you set up. And I'll, I'll show you that. So if you are outputting six items, it's going to be six times four. So it'll be 24 bytes. So it this is going to depend on how many items that you're receiving. And that's set up on the CVX side. And then you can also optionally put an offset in there. So if you want to skip some of the results, you can put an offset in there. So that's bytes two and three. So that's the message set up. So let's get back to the PLC program here. So again, this is a custom service. So the service code for this is 4D. So we're going to put 4D as far as the service code. We've already set up all the other stuff here, as you can see. Now, again, as I just mentioned, we're going to send four bytes. And then we're going to receive a certain amount of bytes. And that, again, that's going to depend on the setup. So I'll get to that in a minute. But So we're going to send from our L12. That's our send location. So we put that in here. So our send is set up. We're set up for four bytes. We'll get to that in a minute here. So if you remember, on the CVX side, go back to that and show you the setup here. I go to output. We are setting it up to output several items over Ethernet IP. Again, this service will read out the byte allocation area. So each one of these is going to be an item that we're going to receive. So we got, you can see we've got the total status, we've got an X, Y, angle, uh, match percentage, and then an edge pitch. So we have six items that we're going to be outputting. So 
we're going to need to receive 6 times 4 bytes, so that'll be 24 bytes that we're going to be receiving. So let me go ahead and put this back to run mode and go back to our message setup on the PLC side. So again, this is where we're going to put our, we're going to receive 24 bytes of information. And where we're going to receive that to, that's where we need to set up our receive. So we're going to put that into L11, which we have set up already. So that's our receive data location. And uh, that's the basic of the message set up here. Uh, so again, set up your receive information here, how many bytes to receive, and that'll depend on what you set up on the CVX output section. And then we're always going to send four bytes of information. And we're going to send that from, in this case, L12. The multi-hop tab, that's where you put the IP address of the CVX controller. So we're going to send this message to this IP address uh, when we issue this message. So I'll close that out. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and download this to the PLC. And then I'll test out this message. Okay, our program is downloaded to the PLC now. So if you recall, in the send information, bytes 0 and 1, we need to tell it how many bytes we'll be receiving. So if you recall, again, that's six items we're receiving. So four bytes per. So that's 24 bytes. So we need to load in a 24 here. Um, put a 24. Uh, if you needed to put that offset in, that would be bytes 2 and 3. Since this is a long data type, you'd have to get down to like the binary level here. And If you wanted to put the offset in there, that would have to be in the bytes 2 and 3. So that would be the upper part of the bytes here. But we're not going to worry about that. We're going to just put no offset and simply receive 24 bytes. Okay, so we have our send information all set up. And if you recall from the message here, we're, we're going to receive our data into L11. So this is where the stuff will be received to. So let me open that up. So when I issue my command, we should receive six data items here. So let's go ahead and manually toggle this bit for the message. So once the message is sent, if it's successful, the done bit will turn on, as you can see here. Uh, if there's an error, the error bit will turn on and it will give you an error message. But it looks like we got our done message here and you can see the data populated here. If you recall, it was the total status was the first data item. So even though that's a pass fail bit, it's still going to use up one location here in the output section. So it's a zero. By the way, a zero equals an okay condition and a one will equal a no good condition. We have our X, Y, our angle our mass percentage, and again, that average pitch. And we're set for fixed point, decimal point. So these are values that are actually multiplied by 1,000. So if I pull up the CVX screen here, you can see our X position, for example, is 583.180. Our Y position is 471.711, etc. So if I go back to the PLC side, you can see it's those same values, just multiplied by 1,000. For reference here, I just did a quick screen snip so you can actually see the values compared to your Here's a snip of the actual CVX screen from the remote terminal. Again, the X value, Y, angle, and match percentage numbers you can see here as a decimal, and you can see they're over here multiplied by 1,000. So again, that's how fixed point will be output. Again, if you recall, the first item that we're outputting is the total status. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the part out take the part away from the machine and trigger it so there will be no part and the, it will be a failed condition. And what I'll do again is I'll cycle this bit. So I'll toggle this bit. So you can see we got a failed condition. Again, a no good condition equals a 1. You can see we're not getting a pattern, 0, 0, 0. You can see we're still getting a value for the pitch tool because it's technically still there. But you can see we failed on the pattern tool and there's nothing left. So I just wanted to show you the uh, total status. So everything judgment wise will be a 1 for no good and a 0 for OK when you're outputting things like the total status. Now we'll show you that same exact example of receiving the data but this time we're going to use the floating point decimal option here. So let's say you want to receive the full floating point decimal instead of the fixed point which is multiplied by a thousand. So the first thing you need to do on the CVX side is go back to setup mode, global, communications and I.O. and go back to your Ethernet IP settings. And I'm going to change this to floating point now. So again, all decimal data will now be a single position 32 single precision 
32-bit floating point value instead of a fixed decimal. So I'll go ahead and click OK. And we'll go back to run mode on the controller. And I'll trigger on a part. You can see here, we got our part in play. So now we'll go back to the PLC. All right, here's the PLC program again. So we're offline with the PLC. We can change our message. So I'm going to click on the setup for the message here. You can see here is our message we had already set up. So if we're going to receive single precision floating point decimals, we need to change our receive location. So if you recall, we're receiving to the long type, which is 32-bit integer. So we need to set up a floating point. So the first thing we need to do is on data files, we're going to go ahead and create a new one. And we're going to call that float. And we'll call this our floating data or floating. We'll just call it floating. And uh, again, you need to give it a number of elements. So we'll just call it 128. Again, you just need enough to make sure you have enough to receive your data. So We've created our F13, so now I'm just going to simply change this to F13 instead of L11 as far as our receiving. And I'm going to set everything else is still going to be the same. We're going to receive 24 bytes, just like before. We're sending four, so everything else is the same. We're just going to receive this to a floating location this time. I'll go ahead and download this to the PLC. Back to run mode. And we'll toggle our message. You can see we got the done, but this time we're going to open up the floating, and you can see here we got our. We're still getting our total status in the first location, but here is our data. But this time it's as a single precision floating point decimal, so you have the full decimal value. Here you can see I did a quick snip of the remote desktop section here of the tool with the values here, so I can show you it side by side. So you get again, you can see the x value, the y value the angle and the match percentage and again this was the average pitch from the pitch tool but you can see the data is coming across as a full single precision floating decimal point.